Welcome to another series on Physics Practical. In today's video, we are going to be discussing the 2022 National Examination Council Physics Practical. This series will be in two parts. In today's video, our discussion will be on electricity and specifically we're talking about the theory behind the experiment. But let's get started. In, the ex in this year's experiment, you'll be provided the following apparatus, a resistor box, a resistance box, a galvanometer, a two volt accumulator, a plug key, meter bridge connecting wires, jockey, a two ohm standard resistor, which is which will be covered and labeled X. What that means is the you'll be given a two ohm standard resistor, but the at the value will be concealed. The two ohm will be concealed and it will be labeled X. Then you'll be given a one ohm resistor, which means the value of this resistor will be, will be made known to you. So from this apparatus, we can deduce that the objective is to determine the resistance of the concealed standard resistor using meter bridge. So let's take a look at the experimental diagram. Then we are going to, we are going to analyze it uh, I'll walk you through the, the principle behind this experiment. We'll derive the equation of this experiment. Then we'll take a look at how the graph will, will, like, will, will, will look like. And eventually, we take a look at some of the precautions you should take into consideration when performing this experiment. So let's talk about the experimental setup. Here's the experimental setup. Here you have the resistance box. You have the resistance box here. You have the unknown or concealed standard resistor. You have the known standard resistor as R1. Then you have the G as your galvanometer. Then PQ is a potentiometer wire that uh, re that uh, that represent the resistance the resistance wire then this j is is that uh, is the tip of the jaw key and you're going to be moving the jaw key around the potentiometer wire then you have your accumulator which is your source of emf that's the battery basically then you have the key here so now this is likely what you're going to see. Although this is not, this is a prediction of what you're going to see based on the apparatus given to you. So take note of that. Now you have the actual, uh, this is how you wire things up. Although the star resistor here we are using is just a, a representation of your star resistor. This, the shape and look might be different. Then here you have the galvanometer and the key and every other component that we've discussed earlier. So how does, how is this experiment meant to go? What's, what's the procedure of this experiment? Here's how it goes. So you'll be expected to do the following. The first is you'll be expected to, to, to set a value for the resistance on the resistance box. So for instance, you may be asked to make R to be 10, for instance, 10 ohms. That is, you may be asked to remove a plug of 10 ohms, right? And once you've done that, you'll be asked to adjust or move this jockey on this potentiometer wire until the reading on the galvanometer wire is zero. Typically, a galvanometer uh, uh, reading goes from the, the, the center of the galvanometer is zero. And when you move to the left, you have negative numbers, like maybe minus one, minus two, right? Then on the right, you have positive numbers, like one, two and three so if the galvanometer indicator is exactly on zero what that indicates is there is no current flowing through the galvanometer then if it is on the left or on the right side it shows that there's, there's current flowing but the direction might be different what that means is if it's on the negative side the current might be flowing from the top of it may be, might be flowing top down then if it is on the positive, if it's on positive end, it might flow the other direction. But then you, you are expected to adjust the jaw key until the indicator is exactly on zero, which means there's, 
which means the potential difference or the there is no flow of current through the galvanometer. So that is the experimental setup. So you have you, you set the value on the resistance box, then you adjust the jockey, and eventually you stop once the indicator is at zero. Once you have the indicator at zero, you you measure the value of x. X is the is the distance between P and J. So you measure the value of X and you also measure the value of Y. So let's say X happens to be, let's say 20 centimeters and Y happens to be 80 centimeters. Note that we're using a, a potential meter whose length is 100, 100 uh, centimeters, meaning one meter. Once you've gotten those two, those values, X and Y, the next thing you, you might be asked to do is to determine to get the reciprocal of R and to get the reciprocal of Y. And once you've gotten all of that, this will make up your table of reading. So this is how the experiment goes. So you change the reading on the resistance box. You adjust the jaw key along the potentiometer wire until the reading on the, on the galvanometer is zero. Then you stop, then you take the X value, you read the X value, you read the Y value, you take the reciprocal of R and the reciprocal of Y, and that makes up your table of reading. So the next question is, what is the what principle governs this experiment? So that's what we're going to discuss in the next slide. The principle behind this experiment is known as the Wheatstone Bridge. the Wheatstone Bridge. So let me talk about the principle using this illustration. So you, you imagine you have this resistor R1 and you have this another resistor known as R2. Then we have another resistor here known as R3 and another resistor here known as R4. Let's say they are all connected to a source of EMF this way. If we have a galvanometer here, now here's what the, the Wheatstone bridge states. If the reading of this galvanometer is zero, in other words, if the potential if the potential difference between these two points is zero, if there's no, if the potential difference is zero, in other words, if there is no difference in the voltage between these two, if they are the same, there won't be any flow of current. And there's no flow of current along this path. The reading here will be zero. If this is the case, the Wisdom Bridge principle states that if you have the setup R1 over R2 will be equal to R3 over R4. So let's apply this idea to this experiment. We know that R1 is the 1 ohm standard resistor. But what about R2? What's R2? R2 is the equivalent resistance of these two resistors in parallel. So what that means is R2 is equal to 1 over R, since they are connected in parallel, plus 1 over R0. So that is R2. Now what about R3? R3 is the resistance due to this resistance wire. In other words, is the resistance from the potentiometer wire between point P and J. And we know that the resistance of a wire can be expressed as follows. So R3 is equal to the resistivity of that wire times the distance, which is X. PJ is X divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. So the same thing applies to R4. R4 is the resistance from point J to point Q. So that means it's equal to the resistivity times Y, which is distance, divided by cross-sectional area. So what can we do with this idea? We can determine the ratio between R3 and R4 as follows. R3 over R4 is equal to the resistivity of that wire times x divided by cross-sectional area, then 
or R4, it is resistivity times Y divided by cross section area. If you simplify, the resistivity and the cross section area will cancel out. So you'll be left with R3 over R4 will be equal to X over Y. But then we want to represent this in terms of Y alone. We know that the length of the wire, let's take the length of the wire to be L. So given that we know the length of the wire is L, in our case, we know the length to be 100 centimeters. It could be anything, but in this our, case, our example is 100 centimeters. So let's say the length of the wire is L. X plus Y is equal to L at any given point in time. So which means we can represent X in terms of Y as L minus Y. So this implies that R3 over R4 is equal to L minus y divided by y which means we can take that as l over y minus one so now that we are done with analyzing r3 and r4 what about r1 r1 and r2 so we can take that as follows r1 r1 over r2 is equal to we know R2 to be, we know 1 over R2 to be 1 over 1. If you, if you take a look at this, you'll see that we have this as 1 over R2. So we can express this as R1 over R plus one, R1 over R0. Okay, so now let's connect the two. So let's take the two sides. So we can say that since r1 over r2 is equal to r3 over r4 we can say that r1 over r plus r1 over r0 is equal to l divided by y minus 1 if you make if you make r a subject or well, let's take the, this other one to this side so we're going to get r1 over r equals L over Y minus 1 minus R1 over R0. So what the next thing I want to do is to take the reciprocal of R and the reciprocal of Y. So that will give us the following. That will give us R1 times R raised power minus 1 equals L times Y raised power minus 1. And minus 1 minus R1 over R0. So let's divide all through by R1. So that gives us R minus 1. This power minus 1 equals L over R1. Then Y raised to power minus 1. Then minus 1 over R1. Then minus 1 over R0. So this is the governing equation of this experiment. So what can we say? Uh, what's what then is the slope? The slope is the is the is the coefficient of y raised by minus one. So if s represents the slope of the graph we're going to get, it means s will be equal to l over r one. Then what about the y intercept? The y intercept will be equal to minus one over r one minus one over r naught. So we can also determine the x intercept by making by making the r raised by minus one zero and solving for y if we if we do that that gives us the x intercept you may be asked to get the x intercept so what this is the equation governing this experiment what about the graph how would the graph look like ultimately here is how the graph is going to look like so the graph is going to look like this. So if this on the on the y axis, we're going to have r raised to the power of minus one. On the x axis, you're going to have something like y raised to the power minus one. It's also possible this is swapped. It's possible that you'll be told that on the y axis you have y raised to the power minus one and all of that. But in our in our own example, this is the case we have. So how do we expect the graph to look like? For this scenario, in this scenario, we expect the graph to run through the 
graph this way where it cut across the x-axis here then it cut across the y-axis here and why do we well how are we sure that it's going to be negative the reason is if you check this value of c c is going to be negative because one over r1 is is minus one over r1 is negative minus one over r0 is negative and eventually the c will be negative that's the y-intercept then uh, this becomes the slope s so this is how you should expect the graph to look like and once you have your graph you may be asked to determine the you may be asked to make some calculation and that those calculation might lead you to figuring out either r1 or r0 they may ask you to do the following they may ask you to look for something like this so let's say they ask you to look for maybe something like s l over s this l over s is equal to r1 because if you make we know that s is l over r1 if you make r1 the subject you will get the following l over s then you may also be asked to determine something like this where they where okay given that you know c to be minus 1 over r1 minus 1 over r0 they could make r0 the subject of the formula and ask you to do something like this where they will say okay look for the value of maybe h but that h may just be a a placeholder for r0 so let's try to make r0 the subject if you do that you're going to get something like r0 basically is r1 divided by minus 1 minus r1c so you may be asked to calculate something like this and that represents r0 so this is just walk you through what you should expect to you should be expecting on the day of the exam or on the day of the practical so let's talk about some precautions we should take into consideration when performance experiments ensure that you don't scrape the potentiometer wire with a jockey so that you don't you don't make that wire thinner because the more you scrape if you scrape it hard uh, with with force you may end up take uh, scratching away some some metals and that will make the wire thin over time then the other thing you want to do is to avoid error due to parallax when taking reading from the galvanometer try to ensure your eyes is in, is is placed in parallel to the reading then you also want to avoid error to parallax when measuring the value of x and y then another important thing you need to note is each time you take reading on um, remove the key to avoid draining the battery so what that means is if you take a particular if you perform if you if you change the value on the resi resistance box and you've taken your reading remove the plug immediately after taking reading then when you are ready to take the next reading then you insert the plug so by doing it that way you you will you will make you will, you will reduce the battery drainage over time so these are some of the things you should take note of in the next video we are going to simulate this experiment using the Marvin Up Physics Lab. See you in the next video.